So a mom who is in the back to school flurry of excitement, it is that time of year, people. And I don't know about you, but for me, this is the new year. It's never January 1st. It is always the 1st of September. And even though my little one isn't ready for school yet, I work with a number of clients who have kiddos who are making the transition back. And I see the impact that this time of year has on you. So what I wanted to do today is invite my amazing friend, mompreneur and soulpreneur, Robin Cunningham, to share with us some self-care tips for moms who are in this back to school transition period of time. Robin is a dear friend of mine. She is the founder of The Full Circle. It is a lifestyle brand for moms. And Robin's work really focuses on the struggles that mom life presents, how we overcome them through soul therapy, nourishing food, and building a healthy home. So Robin, I am so happy that you are here with us. And if you'd like, I'd love for you to share a bit more about your work and what you do. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here with you. Uh, we go way back, so it's so nice to connect and be able to do these type of things together because we're really truly on a very similar path. So I had my first daughter six years ago, and so two daughters, six and three, and I have to say that motherhood really slapped me upside the head, and I went, I've gone through some really, really rough years. I don't know if I was mentally ready. I don't know if anyone's ready for it, though, so I know I wasn't ready for the huge shift that it would um, that it would make in my life. And so I'm just getting real about the struggles that we face, giving them a name, calling them out and, and allowing moms the platform to be heard, to be listened to and to be validated in the sense that what we go through is real life. We may not talk about it. Mainstream society may not want us to talk about it. We might want to sugarcoat it, but that's not real. And I think that the more we can be real with ourselves, our friends, everybody around us, the more we give each other a voice and a voice to be heard, to know that anxiety and depression and all those range of mental health illnesses within the mom community are true things that we go through on a very large spectrum. And so I just, yeah, this experience has just brought me to fight for moms, to really put my stake in the ground and say, these things are true. And why do we need to act as if they're taboo, taboo topics? Why can't we be real with each other? And not, I'm not about complaining, but I'm about listening to each other and, and knowing that you're not alone and we're not alone with the struggle that happens behind closed doors. We live very segregated lives these days and it's to the detriment of mental health for moms. We close ourselves off. We don't have a community that we can rely on. And if we do have a community, maybe these topics aren't freely expressed because we think we have to be the perfect mom. And I'm calling BS because there's no perfect mom. And the more we can embrace our imperfection, oh, the more we can just step into our own light of just saying, like, just not even accepting that modern way of, or that mainstream way of thinking about putting that perfect package of a mom together. Yes. And I love that you have. A uh, big emphasis on building community. And we're going to talk about how you're building community at the end of this. But I, I love that there is this embrace of the perfectly imperfect journey that we are on as moms. And I think what you are providing is that space for people to have that honest conversation mm -hmm. with themselves first and foremost, but then with others. And today you have some tips for moms who are in the midst of this back to school transition, which I think is one of those times of year where maybe we get into that perfectionist tendency, we get into some compare and despair with other moms and parents and how are they doing things and why aren't I doing it that way? And so I would love for you to share your tips today for moms who are in this transition period as we begin what I refer to lovingly as the real start of the new year. Yes, I love that. I do. I do. I think it's so true. Um, so yes, also just, I'll just put a full disclaimer out that my oldest is in grade one. My youngest is not in school. So I honestly don't know what it's like to have four kids 
in a thousand activities. Okay. So I'm just going to put full disclaimer out there, but I do know that my husband and I have been very, we have premeditated kind of what we want this year to look like. And I think this will help everybody because I'm not okay. I'm not okay with rushing into the school year and being dragged along by a time frame, other people's opinions, like you said, I'm not, I'm not willing to buy into it. So well, instead, I have three tips to share today that I hope will help kind of root you and get grounded in the reality of what we, kind of like what we have control over and what we don't have control over and how we can find a really great harmony between the two so that everybody is happy. I don't think we, I think we buy into the busy mode way too much. And it's almost like a status symbol. Hey mom, how many activities are your kids involved in? Hey mom, like how many volunteer activities are you doing? And like you said, this, this endless struggle with comparison is, it is to the detriment of ourselves and our family values. So here are the three things that I'm really, that we're going to be doing and I've already thought about, and I would encourage people to sit down and take some time to consider. So the number one biggest thing is, and I, and I want to say, how much fun can you have with this? This shouldn't be seen as a chore, but getting excited about charting your own course, getting excited about you know, putting your own stake in the ground for your family's like well-being. So the number one thing is premeditate your month. So I would suggest yourself as a mom taking some time for reflection first and then getting in your spouse involved if they're willing to have that conversation. And again, make it fun. Can you book a babysitter and go out for supper? You know, grab your notebook and your pen and go out for supper together. Can you make it a special event that signifies, um, you know, just having that mutual time together? And I think what you need to do with this, this planning stage is a couple things. So this is broken down into a few steps. Number one is grab your pencil, not your pen, because we all know as mom life, pens don't work because things fluctuate and change even hourly. So as we approach the scheduling type of um, mindset, the two words that I want you to remember are easy breezy. So there is no rigidness here. There is no, um, like the pencil, the Sharpie, get them out of here because they don't belong. Because the more we put parameters on ourselves, the, the, it creates anxiety. And you're like, and if you don't achieve the perfect day and you don't achieve the perfect schedule, it sends you into a tailspin of, of feeling like you're not perfect. So I want you just to have fun with this. So plan out, so pencil in, I want you to think about three things. Of course, this is mom life. We cannot just erase our schedule and have no responsibility. Sorry, like I think I've maybe come to realize that now. Um, but number one in this category, so premeditating your month, A is what are your actual responsibilities? Or I call them the non-negotiables. So you pencil in those, for, and for each of your roles, you're a mom, you're a, a spouse, you are a, maybe you are a sister and a daughter, maybe you have a, a job, so you're at work, and maybe you're a volunteer. So within all of your roles, what do you have to do? Like, you know that your child is starting lacrosse on September 3rd. You have to take them. That's your responsibility. So pencil it in. So we put in our responsibilities. Now, here's the key thing though. As you start to pencil in all your responsibilities, can we take an objective bird's eye approach and look at this and say, is there anything I can let go of? What doesn't feel right for me? What's not working? Am I hiding behind an excuse? Am I just trying to make this work and it's not working? Am I trying to please other people? And here's the biggest mantra that you can use for yourself that will release the stress and pressure around pleasing people. I'm okay saying no as long as I'm tr staying true to myself and to your family. Oh, it's so good. It's so liberating. So once you pencil in your responsibilities, pencil in within these rules, what do you want to do? So usually all we get to is penning in, penning in, writing in the responsibilities. That's, that's as far as we go. But now for all of your responsibilities, can you think of what would you love to do this month? Do you want to take your mom out for lunch? Pencil it in. Do you want to have a spouse date? Pencil it in. And then like one-on-one -on -one time with each of your children. Those are like, those would be 
kind of the main things because before you know it, the month goes by and I hear from moms all the time. Oh my God, like I have no time for myself. I have no time for my spouse. I have no time for my kids. And I just challenge people encouragingly to cut out things that aren't supporting their ultimate family goal or their ultimate family goals. So now what do you want to do? And then the third one is your self maintenance. So every day is meditation for me. Um, four times a week is yoga for me. And I try to walk a couple times a week. Can you pencil that in now? And if you do, these are the three main categories, your responsibilities and what you want to do and your self maintenance. If you can schedule in and pencil those in, you will be amazed how much white space you see, which will equal less time on Netflix or less time on YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever. Yeah love this first tip for a couple of reasons. One, you're doing in partnership with somebody. So my guess is, and I'm sure that you would agree that if there isn't a spouse involved, if it's your partner, maybe you have family members or friends who help you out with the care of your children, or, you know, maybe there's other moms that you could sit down and almost do this. I, I mean, I could see a group of moms sitting down <laughs> to do this exercise together. Mm -hmm. But I think what's great about it is that if you sit down to do it with somebody and you make it an event, like you said, you know, either a gathering of moms or you are going out on a date with your spouse or you're sitting down with, you know, your family members who help out with, you know, childcare, there's an accountability piece that's kind of automatically built into this, which I absolutely love because you're, you're putting it out there for somebody else to hear and they can go, Hey, did you go to that yoga class or did you get that meditation in today? So I love that. And I love that you've broken it down into the three pieces and that there is an aspect of it that is listening to what your body is telling you about what are your yeses and what are your no's. So, you know, in relation to those non-negotiables, like you said, is it truly a, you have to, or is it, mm -hmm. I feel like I have to, but I don't really want to. So <laughs> it's like, is it somebody else's rule or is it a rule that you're creating for yourself? Yeah, exactly. So I think that we really get caught up in, I should volunteer for that. Um, I should put my kid in hundred activities, but at the end of the day, it's just creating so much stress that you don't even know who you are anymore. I know for us with my oldest going into grade one, I know it's going to be a really tough transition. She, I don't know, she, she's a quality time kid. So love, like knowing the love languages of your children is really key. She's a quality time person and she had a really tough time with kindergarten. And so I'm kind of have some plans in place for her, but I know for her, I am not putting her in any activities this year. I have made a firm decision. And this is really the age where people are doing dance and gymnastics and so many things. And I'm saying, no, it will stress us out. I will have to force her to get there. It won't be fun. So I'm just giving her another year. And I know that around the age seven mark is really truly a developmental leap for kids that they will be, if they love dancing now, they'll love it more when they're seven years old. Okay. Number two is planning your, here's a little bit more practical, planning your suppers for the whole month, for the whole month. So now that you have your whole calendar penciled in, you can see what nights that you're home, what nights that you're not home and plan your suppers accordingly. So this, like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when I don't know what's for supper and there's hungry, hangry children and a grumpy mom who's ready to go to bed, it is not a good recipe for positivity around here. So if I can have suppers planned out for the entire month, it takes like such a weight off my shoulders. I'm going to tie number three back into number one. But really, if you had a fun night, again, with whoever you want to sit down with and premeditate and get clear on your family's mission and values. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, sorry, I'm giving Robin a huge <laughs> thumbs up because you all know values and core values and mission are a yes. big part of the self-care equation. So I'm, I'm already super <laughs> about this one. <laughs> but see, here's where we can take the reins into our own hands. And here's where we can take back control. Because again, I observe a lot of moms being complete is a tornado of their life. And they're allowing this tornado to break down their family values because activities are more important or status quo is more important. And I don't think it's healthy for soulful living where we can be content um 
just content is a big word, right? So that we can release our anxiety because it's huge. I think anxiety is huge in the mom realm. Okay. So get clear on like, are these things really important to us? What is important to us? What isn't? How can we chart our own course, letting go of societal expectations and norms? And for us, I know for sure that not putting our daughter in activities this year, I know people will be like, oh, really? Well, okay. Like my daughter's in dance and my daughter's in gymnastics and I'm not, and I'm not doing this. So for those who might want an idea, Robin, do you have an example of a family value that somebody might have on their list? Would you mind sharing one of your family's mission or core values that you all live by just to help people get some context around what that might sound like? I think for us, the main one is quality time because we've all identified our love languages and that really, really helps. And so for us, if we're strong, grounded, content as a family, we can do anything. I want my children to have a strong connection to us, not their activities, right? Like there is huge value in activities, don't get me wrong. But if that takes the place of quality time and really family-centered time, I think we've gone to the, the far end of the extreme. There's a, there's, a, there's a healthy balance, I believe. So for us, is quality time. It is sitting, and I mean, right now, again, we're not doing activities in the evening, but it is family supper with no distractions. And we make time every month as a family and as individual girls to have that one-on-one -on -one time with, with each other. So quality time is a huge value for us. And I feel like the more we put on our plate, the more we schedule in, the more that we erode that core central value of family time. It just start, we just start to pick away at it. And then people get grumpy, people get irritated, and things start to blow up at home. I love that you've identified that. And for anybody who isn't familiar with the five love languages, um, I'll include a link to that resource below. You can actually take a free online quiz. I, I recommend this to all of my clients as well. Um, so you can do it for relationships, but you can also learn what your kids love language is if you have children at home. So they actually take a quiz or you do an assessment depending on how old your child is. And you can start to learn how to communicate using their love language. And What's really awesome for your family, Robin, is that you all share the same <laughs> love language, it sounds like, which is really beautiful. And I think it, it, it's a value that makes things very clear. Like, yes, we're spending our time doing this or no, we aren't. And, and you all know that I say this, but if we're aligned with our core values, then we're aligned with our truth. And when we're aligned with our truth, things flow. We don't get as aggravated. We don't get as burnt out. We actually continue to fill our bucket with the things that light us up and that, that keep us in our joy current. I know that I've learned something. I mean, I plan my meals weekly. I've never considered planning them <laughs> monthly, so I might institute that tip right away. <laughs> um, if you want to connect with Robin, multiple ways to do it. She is active on Facebook. Her website is robincunningham.com. I will include a link to all of her social media feeds in the description below. So make sure that you do that. And Robin, you have some work that you are manifesting. And I would love for you to share a little bit about what you are bringing forth and how people can find out more about it. It's called the Full Circle Membership. And it's really been birthed from my extreme struggle with motherhood. Okay, extreme struggle with motherhood. I had postpartum depression with both my girls and it was just a very big life change for me that I had to go, um, I had to go through. And I, I mean, I'm, I think I'm coming out the other side with more clarity of how we need to stand up for each other as moms. So the full circle membership is everything a mom needs to, to have a more soulful, quiet, relaxing, focused, clear month which equals life in general. So this has been like, I, I was just talking about this on one of my videos the other day that is like, this has been, so it's, so it's been in works, I think since I had my first child, right? Like just my mind going so um, strongly in this direction of how we can support moms. And so I brought it into fruition this past 
winter and started writing down all the ideas that were coming to my mind. So right now we just have a test group of 33 fabulous women that are testing out each part of, yeah, each part of this um, membership. So in essence, there's a theme every month and a theme that is very soul centered. So for example, August theme is be present. And so everything in the package is based around this theme so that we can really work on our inner language, our inner dialogue, our thoughts around this particular theme that I think will very much so enhance your day-to-day -day living. So you get two yoga classes to do at home. You get a podcast that walks through the whole. So actually the podcast well, every month sits you down, me and you together, and we actually do this whole calendar system together on the podcast, right? So we get to do it. It's like this date with you and I that we actually get to sit down and I walk you through each of those steps and even more than we talked about today. Then there's a guided meditation. There is a 30 day meal supper plan. So you get third, you get supper plan for every day of the month and the grocery list that goes with it is clean, it's easy. Um, and then there are beautiful affirmations that you can download to your phone or print and put around the house to again, just keep those good vibes flowing so that you can feel whatever it is, like the presence of what it is that we're working on in that particular month. Robin, I know that your work is born out of you walking your talk. I know that you have been somebody who has struggled with motherhood. You've been very open about your personal experiences. And I know that that has enabled you to connect with and identify with so many moms from so many different backgrounds. And if you are a mom, if you are a parent who has at any point had a moment of self-doubt or struggle, if you've wondered if there are other people who are thinking some of the same, same things you are, or if you have worried that maybe something is wrong because that, you know, you just don't feel like you're measuring up in some way, you need to connect with Robin, her work, and you need to sign up for her membership program because this is the space for you to connect with other people who are experiencing the same things. And I can tell you from personal experience of being a student of Robin's, of working alongside of her, of, of teaching yoga with her, that she embodies this entire philosophy that motherhood is a struggle, but we don't have to go through it alone that there is a way that you can honor your truth, respect yourself, honor your family, create a healthy home, eat nourishing food that's going to serve you, have soulful time for yourself, have soulful conversations with other people. So if you identify with any of this, be sure to check Robin out. Again, I'm going to post everything in the description below. Robin, thank you for creating this membership program, The Full Circle. I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited that you have 33 women in the program already. That's amazing. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Thank you so much. It's been, a, it's been amazing to connect with you. And I'm just excited to, I don't know. I just, thank you. You are so welcome. So everybody, again, all the links will be below. If you need additional support with your self-care, also be sure to download my 50 self-care tips for everyday living. You can find that in the description below as well. As always, stay ignited out there. I will see you soon. Bye.